Hey guys, Brian from the gas station here. I know it's been a long time, uh, but I'm back. Um, I've got a whole bunch of stuff going on with my job, so things haven't been as uh, as uh, easy to do lately. I'm working a lot more, so uh, but I will uh, try and do more as far as uh, getting you guys some videos and stuff, and uh, trying to make it a little bit. Uh, a little bit more consistent these days, um, but uh, had to really dedicate some time to the uh, to the full time thing. So, anyway, um, wanted to come back, wanted to do a review. Got some new toys and gear while I was away. Uh, this is one of them. This is the uh, the Pentax uh, six seven. This is a medium format camera. Um, this thing is a monster. Uh, it's absolutely huge. Um, I'm seeing if I can find something to give you a size comparison with. All right, we'll stick with the uh, the Pentax family of things. Um, so there's the Pentax 6.7 and there's a Spotmatic. <clears throat> so you can see this thing is absolutely massive. It is a huge, huge camera. It's really big. I know it's not as big as like a uh, Mamiya RZ and stuff like that, but this thing is a beast, um, and that's what they, people call it on the forums all the time. Oh, the beast, the beast! But yeah, it's it's a big, big camera. Um, it's a six by seven, um, you know, six by seven negative that you get from this camera, which uh, they say is like you know the the perfect format or whatever. That's you know they use that in sort of their marketing or the ult. I can't remember what it was. It was either the ultimate format or the perfect format or whatever it was, but. Um, they, they said that because it sort of had a direct relationship with the 8x10. Uh, so you could blow this up to 8x10, not have to crop, um, and you just get basically all of the resolution out of the negative. Whereas you, if you were to print out something on a uh, 6x6, you would have to crop something and then blow it up even more. And so you were sort of like losing some of your, your resolution. So you're going to see that a lot of the uh, photos that you see with the Pentax uh, with the 6x7 format is going to look a little bit sharper than what you might uh, see with the Hasselblad, although it's not necessarily true that one is sharper than the other. It's just you're blowing up the negative a little bit more with the Hasselblad because of the crop. So anyway, let me go through this camera a little bit. Uh, there, there's a huge in-depth review. I can't remember the guy who did it. Uh, it's like a three-parter and it's like tons of time but I'm, I'm gonna give you a quick overview if you really want to go and learn every little facet of the camera you can go ahead and do that but I'm gonna give you an, uh, just a you know a quick and easy overview and some of my impressions of the camera so far um, and uh, and that's that so anyway what I have on here right now is I have the uh, uh, the 90 millimeter 2.8 lens um, and uh, you know it's it's one of the I won't say smaller lenses, but it's it's sort of like a, one of their standard lenses. This particular lens has the leaf shutter built in to the lens. This camera has a ridiculously uh, low shutter sync, uh, flash sync speed of one thirtieth of a second, which is all but useless for anything outside. So um, you can actually do uh, flash sync with this up to one five hundredth of a second with the leaf shutter lens. So if you want to do outdoor flash or whatever, you can use this lens for that. Um, some controversy as to whether or not this lens is the best lens or not. I, I don't know. It, uh, who knows? Um, so, but it's it's one of the good lenses, definitely. And uh, you know, the 90 millimeter is really nice. The bokeh is beautiful. The preferred lens on this camera actually seems to be the 105 millimeter 2.4 uh, lens. That <coughs> lens looks to be like the the really nice, uh, really nice lens out there. So, um, yeah, so anyway, a little bit more about the camera. Um, manual wind, manual everything. It is, it does, you do need batteries for this. It has an electronic shutter, and the sputter, shutter speeds are controlled electronically. And on the camera itself, let's see if I can get good focus here. Let's try that. Uh, getting there. There we go. So uh, it goes uh, all the way up to one one thousandth of a second. So um, as far as just regular shooting and stuff, you're going to be fine going outside with this and uh, not having too much of an issue with that. Uh, the lens is again a two point uh, f two point eight to twenty two, and the other lenses that you find uh, will vary as such. Uh, manual wind here, and it makes a big sound. Chukunk. The thing's loud. It's no stealth street 
clandestine camera whatsoever. This thing has got a big chunk to it, uh, which is kind of fun. Um, this particular model has the mirror lockup, uh, which if you're trying to get you know steady shot and you're doing anything under, I'd say a sixtieth of a second, you might want to consider using the mirror lockup. Uh, less camera shake. There's a giant mirror in this thing, and this thing just slaps around. Um, I'll take off the lens. I'll show you. And the lenses are huge. I mean, that thing's just enormous. But look at the size of that mirror in there. And here we'll wind it on. And ka chunk. That thing's just a beast. So, anyway, uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely a monstrous uh, camera. Very heavy. Uh, they do sell a wood uh, left handed grip for this, so you can pick the thing up and hold it. It's pretty heavy. Um, it's, it's definitely. Uh, you know, not a not a pocket camera or a point and shoot, um, but uh, yeah. So everything you know, it is a system camera, so everything's removable on this. You can take the lens off, and then you have this is actually the uh, the metered finder. It's not 100% necessary if you have a meter, but it's it's not uh, aperture priority or anything like that. It just gives you a meter reading and lets you adjust everything manually. Um, so it is nice to have it. It is convenient, but uh, everything comes apart here. That comes right off. You can replace the uh, the focusing screens, etc., uh, on the camera. It does take one battery. Um, there is a specific order in which you take this apart and put it back together. You need to take the lens off first, and then take off the the prism, and then replacing things, you put the prism and then the lens back on. There is a little <coughs> chain in here, a mechanical linkage uh, that's easily broken if you do it in the wrong order. So be very careful doing that. <coughs> Um, you can make sure lens, then prism, and then uh, replace it in the reverse order. Uh, there's a power on off switch here. Um, it, it, it's, it's more of a lock. I think the, the camera just kind of shuts down on its own uh, normally. Uh, 120, 220, you need to make a, a change here in the setting, uh, in this little screw right here to make that change. And when you go into the camera, I'll open up the back. This thing's been beat up a little bit, but it still works okay. So here, and then there's another, you switch the uh, the back here. Uh, let's see if I can get that into focus. There we go. So you would switch that from 120 to 220 by sliding that plate back and forth. Very large curtain shutter on the back. Uh, I'm not going to be able to run it from here. Um, but uh, yeah, so a very large cloth uh, cloth shutter, uh, 120, 220 film, as I said. Um, what else is fun to know about this? Um, a little battery check light right here. There's a little red LED. I don't know if you can see it. It's underneath, but uh, that lights up. I'll let you know your battery is good. These are all strap lugs, um, so you, you want to get a pretty nice strap <laughs> for this. Uh, definitely something thicker, uh, so you're not... Uh, not breaking your neck or cutting off your head when you try to use a little thin, tiny piano wire uh, strap on this thing. Um, let me get some focus there. All right, so um, just kind of a cool feature I'll show you is uh, is actually using the leaf shutter on this. Uh, you want to set your uh, your uh, shutter speed, I believe, it's to one eighth of a second, um, and you're going to wind on. Oh, I got to kind of trick this thing into think it has film in it or else it won't cycle the shutter. So the way to do that is you open up the camera, you adjust the, uh, you move the film counter to at least one and then close up the camera and then it thinks it's got film in it. So you can actually fire off the, sh the, uh, the shutter there, right? So again, one eighth of a second, you adjust your shutter speed here uh, on on the lens here, this is the leaf shutter lens. Let's see if we can see that. So you adjust your speed. I'll set it to one thirty. It's set at one thirtieth, and then you have to cock the shutter. So that means you have to move this ring. On this one, at least, it's up and back. I don't know if it's different on any others. This is really the only uh, six seven I've used. So if I'm doing something wrong, please tell me, of course. But from what I've been able to figure out, this is how it works. So um, and then you would switch this, uh, I believe, to you. We're going to figure this out. And then you're going to hear kind of like a, a racket going on. Yep. So what happens is, is the shutter shutter opens, the leaf shutter actuates, and then the, the curtain shutter closes again. So there's like four different actions that happen in this thing. Again, we'll cock the shutter here. 
and then we've wound the film on which cocks the uh, uh, the uh, the horizontal shutter here and then we'll hit I don't know if you can even see it I'm gonna try and get that in the focus let's give it a shot yeah so there's a whole process that goes on there of of the uh, the horizontal shutter opening up, the leaf shutter actuating, and then everything closing again. So it sounds like there's a lot going on, and there is, but that gives you the higher shutter speeds if you're using flash. You have a, a, a flash uh, port here, and this is actually, believe it or not, a, a plunger release. Um, two flash ports here as well. This is the lens release. So this comes off here. My understanding is the larger lens is this. Is, there's two bayonets in, in one on this. Uh, so there's an inner bayonet here right on the inside and there's an outer, outer bayonet for the heavier larger lenses that hook onto the outside there this the bayonet here is just really built very solidly so this everything just kind of clunks in there it's pretty durable battery goes in on the bottom here there's a little you lift this and then turn that and then the batteries come out it takes an LR44 I believe uh, these locks and releases are for the film spools so uh, it's not a quick process it's not drop and load you know there's it's gonna take a little time for you to, to reload I believe you get about 10 exposures per roll on this because it's a 6x7 as opposed to the 6x6 uh, uh, six six, which you get 12 so you get two extra frames out of the 12 these are a little bit wider uh, a little bit wider frames so uh, kind of fun um, so yeah so, but you're getting just unbelievable uh, quality out of this these lenses believe it or not are incredible uh, I don't think there's they, I've seen a bad lens or a bad examples of anything I haven't shot this yet I'm really looking forward to it I will soon I gotta pick up some portrait and go out and uh, and shoot this buddy but uh, anyway fun camera Pentax 6.7 you know, you find a lot of them really beat up. You find them in great shape. The one's in great shape. Even those aren't outrageously expensive. This kit's going to cost you less than a Hasselblad. Um, and you're going to definitely be getting at least the same quality as Hasselblad, in my opinion. Uh, you're not losing anything. What you are losing, though, <laughs> is portability. This thing is pretty heavy. Um, so, again, not, not the heaviest, but it's pretty big. If you like SLR-style shooting, this is pretty much like... An SLR on steroids. It is an SLR, but it's like a camera on steroids. It's just huge. Again, going back to the Spotmatic. Again, you can tell how big this thing is compared. So, and I got a longer lens on here, but just wow, that <laughs> it's just a big camera. I mean, it really is. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, Pentax 6.7. Can't wait to put some film through it. Uh, can't wait to get some stuff processed. Uh, really excited about it. Can't wait to, to go out and shoot with it. Um, definitely not going to do anything uh, that need, requires any sort of form of stealth whatsoever. Um, but anyway, if you have any questions, comments, I know you're, there's a lot of you Pentax guys out there who have a lot of information and certainly are more knowledgeable on this camera than I. Uh, if you have any information you want to share, I, I welcome it. And uh, please feel free to, to add to the comments. You guys are great. Again, I'm going to try and be more involved and get you guys some more videos. Uh, and I know I've been lax, but uh, it really is for, for other stuff, so I'm very sorry. Uh, but I will be getting uh, more videos out there. I'm actually going to do another video right now. I just picked up an X-T1 from Fuji, so I'll give you my thoughts and impressions on that. Um, anyway, that's about it. Brian, the gas station, thanks very much for watching, guys. You're the best. And uh, I'll be talking to you soon. Thanks.